Hello. Welcome to Silent Wisdom. This is Muni. Today I'm going to talk about the age-old question that bothers all spiritual seekers. Who am I? Now if we ask an ordinary person, who are you? They are likely to give their introduction starting with their name. So I am so and so followed by their profession. I am a painter, singer, engineer, doctor, businessman, minister. Further, this may be followed by their relationships. I am the son of so-and-so or wife of so-and-so or uh, father of so-and-so. So they will talk about their family. And then they may add on to talk about their country that they belong to or uh, their uh, state or city or where they live. And um, this is generally the introduction you would get from almost um, everyone. And it is absolutely fine. This is what is required from a social perspective uh, and important for the survival of the organism to remember all these details. From a spiritual perspective, we do not consider this to be the right introduction of yourself, a right identification of yourself. Why? Because all of these things, your name, your profession, your relationships, your country, race, region, they all have a dependent existence. And on a spiritual path, whatever has a dependent existence or whatever is changing is considered as false or an illusion. So what do we say here? We say that only that which is unchanging and permanent that is who you are. Rest all is just an illusion. When we talk about who am I on a spiritual path, the best answer that comes to one's mind is what Adi Shankaracharya at the age of eight gave to his guru on the banks of River Narmada when he was asked, who are you? And that is that was the birth of what we popularly know as Nirvana Shatkam. And he said, Mano buddhi ahankara chittani naham. And of course, I'm not going to share the whole thing. You all know that. It is such a beautiful verse. And what did that mean? That I am none of those things, all the identifications that we think of who we are, I am none of them. In the introduction of Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly given that the purpose of Gita is renunciation of the I that is identified with names and forms. The I that has appeared due to ignorance Ignorance that I am separate from the Supreme Self. So on a spiritual path, and especially when we are taking on the path of knowledge, what is who you are is just what remains when all the ignorance has been dropped. When all that you have accumulated over this lifetime or millions of lifetimes has been dropped and what remains that which does not change at all. So let us take a few examples. When we look at an ocean, we see thousands of waves on the surface. Now, while all these waves look different from each other, but if we take two waves into two different glasses and look at them, what are we going to say? Will we say we have caught the waves or are we going to say this is water? We'll say this is water because essentially the waves are 
uh, are different, but the essence is the same, which is water. If we take another example of ornament and the gold, we may take a piece of gold and convert it into a necklace. Now, while it is a necklace, we cannot take away the gold from it. If we change that necklace into a bangle or then into a bracelet or into an anklet, while the forms may keep on changing, but in all these forms, the gold is always there. So gold is the essence of that ornament. Let us take one more example of the clay pot. When you bring home a clay pot, you might say that you have a clay pot. However, can the clay pot be there without the clay? No, it cannot be. And even if the clay pot breaks, the form may have broken, but the clay is the essence which will still remain. So just like the water is the essence of the waves, the gold is the essence of the ornaments, and the clay is the essence of the clay pot. Similarly, I have an essence which cannot be taken away ever, which always remains. Whatever form I may take, whatever identifications I may have, but all these things are changing and non-essential. But something that remains after everything has been taken away, all the forms, all the shapes, all the names, colors, identifications, relationships, what still remains, that is who I am. If we look at it slightly more deeply, we can say that, um, of course, I cannot be the objects of this world because I am different from the objects. I see myself as different. But then I may think of myself as the body. Now, if we apply the rule of path of knowledge, which says that whatever is changing is not you. So is my body changing? Yes, it is. The body is changing. It was young at a particular time, then it grew older and now it is aging. Uh, sometimes it is healthy, sometimes it is diseased. It is changing all the time. So if it is changing, that is not the essence. It is only the form, a non-essential form. Let us look at our sensations, sensation of pain, hunger, fatigue. Yes, these sensations I feel, I experience, but do they keep changing? Yes, they do. One moment I feel hungry, the other moment I'm not. Sometimes pain is there, sometimes it is not. It is changing, it is not permanent. If it is not permanent, that's not me, that's not my essence. So I'm not the body, I'm not my sensations. Now let us look at the feelings. Sometimes I feel happy, sad, guilty, depressed, angry. Do these feelings, emotions keep changing? Yes, they keep changing. So can those be me? No, they cannot be me. Let us look at our thoughts. Do the thoughts keep changing? Oh, all the time. Every moment, my thought is shifting from one thing to another. So can the thoughts be me? If it is changing, it cannot be me. No, it is not me. My desires, I think of myself. When a desire occurs, I think I am desiring. Now, are those desires me? So let us again ask the question, is it changing? Yes, the desires are changing all the time. Today I want something, next day I want something else. So that cannot be me. Memories. Do the memories keep on changing? Yes, of course, the memory is changing all the time. With every new incident, with every new experience, the memory changes. So that can also be, not be me. The body is changing, the sensations are changing, feelings are changing, emotions are changing, thoughts are changing, desires are changing, memories are changing. So none of these can be me. 
these are just the changing forms. So who am I who is not changing, who is unchanging? Think about it. That is the one who is experiencing all these changes yet remains unchanging, permanent, is present all the time, is present here and now. That is who you are. That is your essence. Find it out. And if you find it out, then that is the end of all suffering. That is the end of all ignorance. Raman Maharishi, with whom this phrase, who am I, became popular, has said that this question, who am I, is not to get an answer. The question, who am I, is meant to dissolve the questioner. Thank you for listening. I hope this helped you. And I'm going to see you again.